Soviet Dawn, the Russian Civil War, 1918-1921. This is a solitaire game in the States of Siege system that has become quite popular in the last decade or so among war gamers especially. The game was published originally as a magazine game and now we have a deluxe boxed edition published by Worthington Games. And it comes with a nice mounted map, some nice tokens and cards. Uh, different versions of the game components so you can choose if for example you want to play with uh, flat round markers representing enemy fronts or standing markers I prefer the flat circular ones but, but again you have several options the idea that you have here at the core of the game like other states of siege games is that you have an area at the center of the board that you're trying to protect at all costs you have enemy fronts that advance against you on tracks on the board and they will be moved by by card events and these fronts represent sometimes uh, yes actual military organizations some of the times they represent more like a combination of military and political elements uh, different fronts can be represented by different markers depending on the circumstances for example the Baltic front starts uh, uh, under Germany at the beginning of the game, then Germany drops out of the war and later it comes back under another commander and fronts uh, have uh, also their circumstances, they may, can make a certain front inactive or indecisive but the important thing is that each front has a number uh, in the center right there and represents the strength of the front so card events uh, will move the fronts towards the central area and you need to spend your actions to push them away from the center. If an enemy marker ever reaches the central area, you lose the game uh, immediately. And this is something that all states of siege games have. Other games also... Uh, uh, other games may also have extra... Uh, elements uh, that will cause you to win or to lose here for example you have you will have a marker here on the political track and you will use actions to try to push it uh, up on the track as high as possible matter of fact if you push it all the way here to the victory section you win the game immediately but if the marker goes down to the zero space you lose the game immediately and those are really the only two uh, things that can make you lose the game. So there are the games that are a lot more elaborate in the system, but this is one of the most, um, I don't want to say basic, that's incorrect, straightforward, straightforward games in the system. Another way of winning the game is to survive until the end of the game, that is to go through the entire deck of event cards, and this is really the heart of the game. The deck is really divided into three separate decks, you shuffle them separately, you start with a deck on the board and then you will draw cards from it the deck will instruct you of when to add the next deck then you simply shuffle the next deck with the remaining cards and you repeat the same also when you're instructed to add the last deck and again if you put your political marker or the way up here on that track you win the game if you survive until the end of the last card you also win the game each turn you will draw a card and you will handle the events. Oh, we start with something pretty, pretty, pretty big here. Let's start with something less, less threatening here. The general idea is this, that you will have a section here that will tell you which fronts advance. It's possible that those fronts are not active on the board just because of the timing, the different order in which the cards are drawn from game to game, in which case you simply ignore advances of fronts that are not on the board or are prevented from advancing by other game effects. You check to see if there are other possible modifiers and situations that apply. In this turn, for example, we have a positive modifier if we attack these fronts. In other situations, we have a restriction against certain fronts. 
we have actions that are like, again, replace uh, fronts uh, with different versions of themselves, remove fronts, add fronts, give you all sorts of different uh, changes, very important historical flavor text here at the bottom. And all important, there's a number here that represents the number of actions. So you uh, advance fronts, uh, take into account, handle possible events, and then you take actions. You have three main actions that you can take. And the, the really main action is you need to attack the enemy fronts. Combat, like in other states of siege games, is extremely simple. You spend an action, you declare an attack against the front, you roll a six-sided die, you apl apply possible modifiers that may come from all sorts of historical events and situations. If your total is equal to or higher than the strength printed on the, on the enemy front, then you move the front back by one space, otherwise nothing happens. And you can attack the same front multiple times per turn as long as you have actions. Generally speaking, you can use your actions to perform uh, uh, different actions in any order and you can repeat the same action multiple times, again, unless there are specific restrictions that prevent you from doing so. This is for the basic action of attacking enemy fronts, which you'll be doing all the time because you gotta push these people away. You can also try to improve your political level, then you spend an action and you're rolling a die, applying possible modifiers. If the number is equal to or higher than the range indicated there, based on the position of your marker, then you improve your political level and you move that by one, otherwise you simply wasted an action, but there is no intrinsic negative effect. You can also try to reorganize the Red Army. This is a really risky <laughs> option because you need to roll a die and you need to roll a six, which is not that easy. And so there are turns in which you will get modifiers and bonuses, and so maybe you want to save that action for then, or if you really have an action you don't know what to do with, which is rare. But so it's not that easy to reorganize the Red Army. But if you do succeed, then you roll a die and you receive the corresponding benefit. There will be a marker that you pick up as a reminder of the benefit that you acquired. But these benefits are massive. It, if you get them, that's, you'll be happy. You'll be really happy. Applied experience, for example, allows you uh, every time that you roll a die for an offensive, to roll a second die, not included with the base set, and the second die will give you a bonus, a modifier there, or might give you, which is pretty good, and so on and so forth. These are fantastic bonuses, but they're not that easy to come by. You also have a little bit of flexibility because you start the game with reserve offensives and political decrees. Basically, you can spend these markers to receive extra offensives if you really are worried that you're going to lose the game because somebody is going to move into Moscow, then you can spend these, or you get a sense that there's going to be a big advantage. Sometimes a marker needs to be in a specific location for you to be able to make it inactive, knock it out of the game, and that may be the time where you're going to spend some reserve offensives. So it's really nice to have that extra flexibility there. The same for political decrees. You can spend these markers to uh, roll, uh, to attempt to increase your political level. Again, it can be good if there are special effects that will give you special um, bonuses for that. Also, some effects will cause you to roll on the political descent table, which will make your political level fluctuate. And you can spend actions that you receive that turn from your allowance here each action that you spend, uh, you can spend actions not as regular actions, but to give yourself bonuses on the political descent table roll. This is in essence the idea. These games in the States of Siege system are, for the most part, or many of them, pretty simple. Again, basic is not the right word. Straightforward would be the idea, because the core mechanism is so simple. Draw a card, resolve what it says, spend your actions to try to push away fronts or to perform other actions on the board. 
Repeat until you either win or you lose. The core idea is so simple, but it really gives these games a personality, flavor, reasons to be excited about them, is how much history you can inject into such a simple core, how you can mold the general idea to represent vastly different situations. And as you will see in my conclusions, I believe the Soviet Dawn does that particularly well. Soviet Dawn is truly excellent. It easily is one of my favorites, if not my favorite game in the State of Siege system. Uh, because it doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it had so many interesting elements in which th the wheel works. There's just so much stuff going on. And you know, the, the system is very flexible. So you can have games with, which have a lot of subsystems. Uh, the, you have flip a card and then you do so many other things. In some games you set up a whole mini battle with moving pieces and then you go back to the main thing. Uh, which there are days of the week in which I may want to play that and especially before the pandemic there were more days of the week in which I would play that. What I prefer to play now is something that's a little more linear but still has a lot of, of, of flavor, a lot of, a lot of taste. And Soviet Dawn has that, strikes that balance magnificently, I believe, in that it probably is one of the simplest games in the States of Siege system. Uh, in terms of how many things you can do, it's not like 20 possible actions, mini battles, mini games, etc, etc, etc. It really is three possible actions uh, and a number of, of action points that you can spend to do them. And yet there is so much going on with the fronts that can go active, inactive, be replaced, uh, leave, return, change, uh, those extra fancy, those extra political actions, super important. But again, it doesn't add any extra rules. It gives me the resources to launch more offensives. I know the mechanic, but then there is the timing and how many do I spend and is it worth it to spend an extra uh, reserve offensive here and so on and so forth. Such simple core that remains simple, doesn't add a lot of subsystems, and yet there is so much flavor, so much variety. I believe this is also a game with a huge replay value uh, because the decks, the way they're shuffled, uh, it can create more extreme variations. And maybe you'll have a game in which everybody joins against you at the same time, other games in which um, somebody remains inactive for a long time. So maybe one thing that not everybody will like is the massive uh, variation in which the script can play out from game to game. But I didn't mind it at all. I found it totally fun and exciting. There was a game in which I lost in the first couple of turns. Uh, I don't remember if it was... No, it wasn't political collapse. Just somebody pff, drove through and I wasn't able to stop them. Couple of bad rolls, couple of bad card draws, and that's and that's fine because other times uh, the story went in so many different ways. Uh, the Tsar may be killed or not. Uh, another country may join you or not. You may drop out the war or the Great War at one point or cho or choose to stay. So many different things can happen. So, and I see that as a value. I see that as a value that brings variety, brings replay value. Some of the games will be maybe controlled by luck, but overall, if you play a bunch of times, you will get a sense uh, that you have a degree of control there. Also, you will get a sense of when the events may strike and, and the possible combinations. Ooh, I should save that resource because I'm waiting for that card that will make the resource really beneficial if I spend it then, and so on and so forth. So you have, you really have a sense of agency getting to know the decks, getting to know what the different effects do, uh, but at the same time, uh, the luck element uh, and, the, and the randomness of the cards and the die rolls will add a lot of interesting challenges, a, inter a lot of interesting situations. I love it, it's, it's so dripping with theme and history and crown, but again, in a package that is so digestible in terms of rules. Very often Chrome means extra rules, and again, before the pandemic I had a different view of this. Now I need games that bring me the theme for free, or in terms of rules overhead, or very, very cheap. And this game does this very, very well. So I'm very happy with Soviet Dawn. The production is really nice, the material components, the design. They didn't sacrifice playability 
to aesthetics, those nice tokens. I prefer the round ones, but if you like the standing ones, that's an option also. Everything is nice, looks nice, and plays well. Everything remains not just pleasant from the point of view of the production, but also very, very functional. So I'm really impressed, I'm really happy. I had a great time playing Soviet Dawn. I suggest you give it a try if you like games in the State of Siege series. I think this is a really strong one. And if you never played a game in the system, this may be the time to start because this, while being a fully flash game, also may work with a, as a gateway to the system because of its core. It remains so simple. And yet it is so much fun. And yet it is so rich.